Hello gang, Kim here and welcome on back to my happy place. So today's video is yet another reveal and review video. This is Rococo Dream and this is what the finished product looks like. As always, I'm sure you can't see the whole thing on the screen, and so I'm just going to pan up and down, starting from the top. Oh, it's gorgeous, it's gorgeous. <laughs> there we go. Hopefully you're getting all that gorgeousness in. Um, and that is pretty much to the bottom of the canvas. The bottom of the canvas is just right there like that. Guys, isn't she just magnificent? I just think this is such a gorgeous piece um let me start off by saying that i actually had this one in my stash for probably over two years now i think i actually bought her when she was very first released um there have been a number of restocks since and so this is an older kit um this review is not going to be quite as gushy as my previous one um, this is the second canvas that I finished this year. The first canvas that I finished was called All Ways Are the Queen's Ways. And I did a review of that recently and I absolutely went crazy for that canvas because the square drills were so amazing. I had somewhat of a slightly negative experience with this one, but obviously we will get into all of that during the review. But please just bear in mind that this is a much older kit from Diamond Art Club. And as we know with them, they are constantly improving things. They have improved many things that I'm gonna talk about here, specifically the drills. They have improved those tremendously. So just bear in mind that if you did buy this kit today, you would have a somewhat different experience I'm sure to what I had. That said, let me give you some stats. So this piece is called Rococo Dream. The artist is Ennis Guerrero. It was released by Diamond Art Club. The size of the canvas is 56 centimeters by 76 centimeters. It's a square drill painting. It had a total of 29 colors and was it only one AB? I think it only had one AB, guys. Difficulty level, I marked this as intermediate. So, I just absolutely love the end result. This piece just speaks to me and speaks to my art-loving heart. <laughs> Those of you that know me know I do tend to lean more towards dark art, and I also like cartoon art and characters and those type of things. I'm not a fan of landscapes at all. I don't really do them. You may see one or two during the entire year on my channel. So for obvious reasons, this canvas just really spoke to me. The color palette in this one, I mean, it only had 29 colors. And I think you can see from looking at it, the majority of the colors were white, black, brown, gray, and various shades of those colors. And then, of course, there was some pink, which you can see throughout this piece. I mean, there's some in her dress, there's some down here on the bows, and obviously up in her hair, um, you can probably see quite a bit of pink as well. The other thing that I hadn't realized at first, um, and I'm not sure how clearly it's coming out on the screen, is that there's actually a carousel here in her hair. There's the top of the carousel, and here are the little horses and so on. So... I didn't really even notice that at first. So I just think this piece is really gorgeous. It's stunning. I love the end result. But let's talk a little bit about the process. So starting with the very basics, the Diamond Art Club canvas, this one is extremely soft and velvety. It was really an, an, a dream to work on and just feels so soft velvety the drills push down nicely um, so no complaints about the canvas itself the glue let's talk about the glue next now i'm not sure if this was because it was a slightly older kit but i did find the glue a little bit strange when i would tap on it it felt sticky it felt very sticky 
But at times, the drills would sometimes lift up in my pen or my, my multi-placer specifically. Like, you know, when you're placing drills down and you lift up your pen, your multi-placer, and let's say you're using a seven placer and four drills have gone down and two are still stuck in your multi-placer. Now, I don't often have that happen. And to me, that's a sign of the glue not maybe being as sticky as it should. So I was actually a little bit concerned that perhaps the drills were not going to stick down as nicely because of that. Like I say, I'm not sure if that's because this is an older kit and the glue just maybe got a little bit less sticky than it would have been right in the beginning. I'm really not sure. But that said, it actually didn't end up being a problem because when I run my hands over this kit, all the drills are down, nothing is popping up. That's something I'm going to touch on just now as well. And it seems like the glue has actually turned out to be perfect. So although I had some initial concerns with the glue, the good news is it didn't turn out to be any sort of major issue. Let's talk next about the drills. So like I mentioned, this kit is over two years old. These were obviously older square drills. I did have some problems with these squares, specifically the three tens. The three tens were really not good. I had a lot of trash with them and I had a fair amount of frustration. Um, it was almost as if the square drills were too big for the little blocks on the canvas. You know, I'd put the drills down and I'd find that I was really having to push them and pull them to try and fit the drills in. And this specifically happened with the three tens. Over and above that, there was a lot of trash. There was a lot of drills that had little knobbly bits on them, a lot that were stuck together, a lot that were random shapes. Um, and it was a tad frustrating, to be honest. There was also one other color. It was one of the grays. Um, there are probably about four or five or six grays in this canvas, but one of the grays wasn't great either. It wasn't as bad as the three tens, but it wasn't fantastic. Now, if you have a look at parts of this canvas, you can see that there's actually a fair amount of 310 in this piece. Have a look down here on her dress, also in the little skull teddy bear. Um, if you go up, you will then see that there is a lot of 310 at the top here, right here on the top left. This was the section that I left for last because it had a decent amount of color blocking. And I like to tend, or I lean towards trying to do the color blocking areas towards the end. Because I sometimes get diamond painting fatigue towards the end of a canvas. And so I find it helps me when I'm working on color blocking areas at the end just to push me through and get me to the end. So I can tell you that I was pulling my hair out a little bit with the section. I was battling to get the, the, the squares nicely down and I was convinced they were going to pop. I was convinced. But that, I mean, that said, as I do this, there is no popping. Nothing has popped. Oh, maybe one there. I can feel maybe one drill there. Um, but really, guys, nothing. I mean, that might just need me to... to there was one, sorry. There was one I just pushed down. And there's still the other one I felt just now. It doesn't seem to want to push down. You see, it won't push down because the drills are a little bit too big. So I'll have to get my pen and maneuver that one down. But the point being that once I did get them down, they tended to stay down, even though I thought I was going to have a major popping issue. So that was really what I have to say about... The drills. I'm not going to bang on about it because obviously we all know that Diamond Art Club is now two years further in their manufacturing process since when I bought this kit. So it's no need for me to bang on about the quality of the drills because if you buy this now, your drills are going to be great. But obviously this is a review video about my experiences and so that was my experiences with the drills. In regard to the ABs, there was only one AB chartered and I don't know why I keep thinking there were two. I'm looking at the legend and there was definitely only one, the 127. Okay, so I did find some of the AB placement in this kit a little bit strange and not 100% what I would have done. For example, there are ABs in her face. Now, I know for a fact that Diamond Art Club no longer does that. I personally don't have a major issue with it, 
But there are, I mean, I know ABs don't um, come through on the camera very well, but there are ABs along her chin. Then it goes up here into her cheek, and her whole forehead here are ABs. Then if we look at her dress, just bizarrely, there's a whole patch of ABs just here around and, and it's not even this whole section it's just like a line like this so i didn't really always understand the ab placement there then are ab's through these ribbons which i do appreciate and i do understand and as bizarre as this sounds there were hardly any if any ab's in the roses so what i did was i added in a pink ab in bits, in lines and bits, into the roses here in her hair and also into the rose on the bottom here. I'm actually not sure if I do this, if you can see the ABs. I know ABs don't really translate very well on a camera. But I have the majority of this pink in this rose, for example, are ABs that I added in. And the same would then obviously apply you know, up at the top here to the bit that I just showed you in her hair, those roses. So those were ABs that I placed. And I must say, and this isn't tooting my own horn, I'm just mentioning that I really think the ABs in the roses look stunning. I also added a couple of crystals into her rings um, here on her fingers. These were just charted as white ABs and I added in a shimmery crystal just almost to give her rings a bit of a a shine and a shimmer. So those were additions that I made and the canvas had not been charted that way, which I did find a little bit strange because I just thought the obvious place for ABs or sparkle would have been obviously in the places that I added the drills to. I think those were the main things. I think those were the main criticisms that I had. Um, were really about the drills, specifically the three tens. The quality of those was really bad, and it did make some working on this canvas very frustrating. And then just to mention that the AB placement was a little bit weird. I think they've also improved that in their most recent canvases. The AB placement is more thought out um, than perhaps it was in this kit. And lastly, like I said in the beginning, the glue was a tiny bit less sticky than maybe I would have liked. But now for the pluses, I mean, the end result is just so gorgeous. And I know because it's hard to get the feel of this entire piece, you know, when I'm panning up and down like this all the time. I do also tr try to leave her alone so you guys can get a look. But I know it's difficult to get a feel for it. So somewhere around about here, I will put up a photo on the screen so that you can see this this piece finished and in a photo that is taken further away. As we all know, diamond paintings are supposed to be viewed at a distance. You are getting a very close up look now. So the photo on the screen is showing you what this canvas looks like at a distance and she is absolutely beautiful. I thought the rendering on this piece was really amazing. I mean, look at these teddy bears. I call them teddy bears, skull bears. <laughs> because they've got a little skull for a head but I mean isn't that just so clear like it even comes out more clear on the camera than it does when I'm standing here but I mean even as I'm standing here it's clear that teddy bear is just so clear this other teddy bear skull bear whatever he is over here is also so clear the rose as I showed you just now very clear and then we get up to her face, and I am just so struck by her eyes. Um, there's dark shading around her eyes that just really makes her eyes stand out and makes them pop. And they look doubly as beautiful through the camera. They really have, have come out nicely. And then her hair with the roses, also divine, and the little carousel. Guys, sorry about that. If you saw a little bit of a blips there in the filming, I um, just ran out of storage space on my phone. <laughs> so just to keep going from where I got up to, I think I was talking about the rendering and the carousel and her hair. If I have one very, very small criticism to make, I'm not crazy about the brown that appears here in the carousel in the horses. I think if you take a closer look, 
um, you can see what I'm talking about, about those brown drills there. I think it is supposed to be the horse's mane and then the horse's tail. But I just think the brown in this section just looks out of place. Um, just because this is a carousel after all. It's not, it's not a real horse. And you know, you've got all this gray and pink and, and that sort of coloring here. So this gray, um, sorry, this brown over here just... I don't know, it seems a little bit out of place. But that is a very, very, very small criticism that I have. So I think what I'm saying at the end of the day is that the rendering of this piece is absolutely fantastic and I just really don't have anything negative to say about it. Another great thing with this canvas is that, although I didn't think this was going to end up being the case, the drills are all perfectly flat they have fitted in perfectly. Um, there is no gapping, zero gapping, to the extent that, like I said earlier, I was a little bit worried that there might have been popping. Um, but there hasn't been, I mean, bar one that I found over here. I think it was two. I found one there and one here, but I've got them both down now. I think it was just a case of me not having placed them down properly. I just had to shift a couple of drills here, but to get them down. But I mean, I am running my hand over this canvas and there is zero popping. And if I pull the canvas up to the, the camera, as I did just now, you'll be able to see, have a look at the placement of these drills. I mean, just how nicely they are fitting together and how there is just zero space between it. You're not seeing light anywhere. You're not seeing um, any sort of gapping. I'm taking you now to the bottom so you can have a look you know, on the other side of the canvas. Look at that. So really, I mean, this is just what I love about Diamond Art Club squares. You know, when we work with squares from other companies, we just often do not get this sort of end result. Yes, I did have some issues and I've discussed those, but I am still extremely happy with this canvas. I'm extremely happy with the end result. And although I did have one or two negative things to say, at the end of the day, I love the end result and I did have fun working on this one. Um, the only other thing I should maybe touch on, because people sometimes like to hear about it, is the issue of confetti versus color blocking. So I would classify this canvas as majority confetti, but there were, um, you know, places where you could get a decent amount of color blocking in. Um, I think it's actually Katie from Diamonds and Washi who always says she likes to have a bit of both because confetti keeps it interesting and color blocking keeps it moving. Well, Katie, I agree 100%. I'm exactly the same. I like to work on canvases that have both color blocking and confetti. I would say that the color blocking in this canvas was probably about 30 to 35% of the canvas. More of the canvas was confetti, and I think you can see that. I mean, if you just have a look up here, piano hair, <laughs> the hair and the carousel, <laughs> color blocking, I mean, sorry, confetti galore. But then if you have a look at this side of the canvas, you'll see a nice big patch here where there was a decent amount of color blocking. But I mean, going down, I think it's probably fairly clear that this was majority confetti. You know, as you pull down here, all this detail and definition in her dress, the rose, these skull bears, you know, her hair coming down here, her ringlets, you know, this was all confetti. So I would say if you are a confetti lover, you're going to be very happy with this canvas. If you are a color blocking lover, you might not be quite as excited. That said, if you are someone who likes both then I think this canvas will probably tick those boxes for you because, you know, it does cater to both. But obviously for this sort of definition, um, which I think is amazing, I mean, the definition down here, you know, is really stunning. Very, very clean lines and lots of definition. I mean, you're going to have quite a lot of confetti. And a little bit strange to think that when there were only 29 colors, you know, when there are fewer colors, you tend to think that there'll be much more color blocking. But, I mean, yeah, for me, there was a good amount of both. So, I think before I close off this review, let me just show you the leftover drills. Um, as you can see, I had drills left over in every single color. 
perhaps not as many as I sometimes have left over in some of my kits. Um, I mean, you're looking at it at a bit of an angle, so it actually looks like there's quite a lot left over, but there isn't really. If you have a look at this gray, sorry, I'm trying to avoid the, the glare. You know, that gray is basically finished. You know and then you've got your three tens well though i did have quite a lot of bags of them the three tens are basically um finished as well and that's because you know i had some problems as i said with the three tens it could have been that maybe this gray also was the other gray that was giving me a few hassles but other than that enough drills didn't run out of any colors and had plenty left over um Oh, look at this washi tape you guys don't you guys hate washi tape really i know we all use it on our canvases and stuff but the stuff just never sticks <laughs> i mean even when i use it on my canvases i often have a problem with um with getting it to actually stick around the the perimeter you know because it's always coming loose anyway that's just a little aside and the last thing i want to show you guys look at this pen this diamond painting pen Tell me this pen doesn't look as if it was made for this canvas. Look at the colors. <laughs> look at the colors in this canvas and look at the colors in this pen. <laughs> so this pen is one of my favorites and the colors just matched, um, you know, this canvas so amazingly well that obviously I had to haul it out and use it for for this painting look also at the ring here in the middle with the diamante on it oh it's just so gorgeous now this is a pen that i actually do remember where i bought it from i actually bought it from an etsy store called pens by maggie i will put a link below so if you want to go and check out her store you can but i'm just totally in love with this pen and it was almost as if I had had it specifically custom made to go with this painting, which I didn't. <laughs> but anyway, I always like to just show you my pen because I know a lot of you are quite interested in that. So you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you are new to the channel and maybe this is the first video you've watched, if you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing. I would love to hang out with you some more on my channel. And if you are returning and you've been with me for a while now, Thank you so much for your support and for watching my videos and for commenting. I really do enjoy interacting with you guys and I love, you know, I love doing this. I love diamond painting. I love sharing my reviews with you. I love giving you tips or, or just not even tips, just showing you diamond painting content that might influence or, you know, guide you a little bit on things you want to buy and so on. So anyway, guys, this is my second yes second finish of 2023 um and so far of the two i've done i've just loved them both and yes i think it's going to be a very good diamond painting year anyway friends as always happy diamond painting bye